The Stolen Reindeer Santa Claus drove up to Toyland the week before Christmas. Whoa, whoa, he cried to his eight great reindeer as they arrived at the gates. The gate slowly opened and a crowd of gnomes and fairies rushed out. Welcome, welcome, Santa Claus, they cried, crowding round the big jolly man dressed in a red coat. Glad to see you all again, beamed Santa Claus. Now just get out of the way a bit and let me drive my reindeer through the gates into Toyland. The crowd ran back and Santa Claus drove straight through the gates, which shut after him. With fairies and gnomes hanging onto his sledge, he drove down the queer, higgledy-piggledy streets of Toyland. Here we are, he cried at last, as he arrived in front of a large house, which looked rather like a very smart doll's house. On the steps stood the mayor of Toyland, a little gnome, dressed in a flowing cloak of yellow. Welcome, Santa Claus, called the mayor, going down the steps to greet his visitor, and nearly tumbling over his long cloak. We are very glad to see you here again. I hope all the orders you gave us for toys and games have been carried out in a satisfactory manner. I hope so too, answered Santa Claus, getting out of the sledge. I've got just a week to go round Toyland and collect all the toys before I start off on Christmas Eve to deliver them to the children. He went into the mayor's house and the mayor gave him an excellent dinner, for Santa Claus had driven many, many, many miles over the snow. Splendid, said Santa Claus when he had finished. Now, will you kindly give me the list of orders I sent you, and I will start on my journey around Toyland. The mayor took a very long piece of paper from a locked drawer and gave it to Santa Claus. Hmm, let me see. The blue fairies are dressing all the dolls this year. I must see if they are ready. The pink fairies are furnishing all the dolls' houses. The water pixies are doing all the ships and boats. They ought to be well done this year. We think you'll find most of the things are ready for you to take, said the mayor, looking over Santa Claus's shoulder. The gnomes are making the soldiers and forts, went on Santa Claus, glancing down at the paper. And the wise elf is looking after the book department and the games. What are the red goblins doing? They're making boxes of crackers for the children to pull on Christmas Day, and when they have parties, said the mayor. We well, haven't heard anything of them for some time, but I hope they're getting on all right. Well, I'll visit the Blue Fairies first, said Santa Claus, getting up from his armchair. I'll drive around in my sledge and put the toys in as I go round for them. He jumped into his sledge, took the reins and drove off to the Blue Fairies. They lived in the centre of Toyland, in a number of tiny little houses. When they heard his sleigh bells, they rushed out. Hooray, hooray, they cried. Here's Santa Claus at last. Come and see all the toys we've got. And they dragged him laughingly into the middle house. In the dining room, there were all sizes and shapes of dolls. They were sitting in chairs, standing up or leaning against the wall. Some were grown-up dolls, some were dressed like boys and girls, and all of them looked spick and span and beautiful. Excellent, cried Santa Claus. You have worked hard, but where are the baby dolls? We must have baby dolls, you know. The blue fairies took him upstairs, and there, cuddled in little beds, were the baby dolls, some in long clothes and some in short baby dresses. Shh, whispered the fairies. They're all asleep, aren't they, sweet? They're lovely, answered Santa Claus, and the children will love them, I know. But you can wake them up and get all of them ready to go in my sledge for me. I want to take them now. Oh, yes, certainly, said the blue fairies. And they quickly gathered up all the lovely dolls from downstairs and upstairs. And soon Santa Claus had them packed safely and comfortably in his big sledge. Goodbye, he called to the fairies as his reindeer started off. Goodbye and thank you. You've done very well this year. Santa Claus then drove the water pixies and they were so busy they didn't hear him coming. Goodness me, me are busy, said Santa Claus to himself as he watched the pixies. They lived in a large blue lake on which were growing great white and yellow water lilies and on the flat lily leaves were their houses. The pixies were sailing a large fleet of ships, boats and steamers. Hey, look out, cried a pixie. Your boat's going to bump into mine. And he plunged into the water and twisted the boats in different directions. They'll sail beautifully, cried another pixie. Won't the children be pleased with them? A tiny little pixie appeared at the door of a house, carrying a submarine. Look what I just finished making, he cried. See if it goes well in the water. 
and he launched it from his lily leaf. Splendid, splendid, cried Santa Claus and all the pixies as they watched the submarine chugging through the water. Here's Santa Claus! Hooray! shouted the pixies, scrambling out of the water to greet him. Your boats are fine, said Santa Claus, smiling. Are they ready to be packed into my sledge? Yes, we've just finished them all, said the pixies, swimming after the floating fleet of ships. I'm very pleased with you, beamed Santa Claus, when the ships were all neatly packed in the sledge. I'm going off to the wise elf now for books and games. Goodbye, and off he went. The wise elf was very pleased to see Santa, and told him all the books were ready and all the games as well. The elf soon brought out great parcels of them, and they too were packed in the sledge. Thank you, said Santa, taking up the reins. Now I'm going to the mayor to sleep in his house for the night. The next day, Santa Claus drove off to the pink fairies to get the dolls' houses, and he was very pleased indeed with them. We've hung up frilly curtains in all the windows, said the little fairies, and we've put down carpets to match the wallpapers in every room, and we've made all the sheets and blankets for the beds and polished up everything we could. Santa Claus peeped into one or two dolls' houses. They're quite perfect, he said, and I'm awfully pleased. Pack them at the back of my sledge, please. There's room there. It took such a long time to pack them in properly that Santa had no time to do anything more that day except drive straight to the mares. He took three days sin over the forts that the norms had made, and there were so many thousands of soldiers to look at that Santa Claus thought he'd never come to the end. You've worked really splendidly, he said to the busy little norms. Now put them in my sledge quickly, please. I've only one day left to collect the boxes of crackers from the Red Goblins, and then I must start on my travels for Christmas Eve. The next day, he started off for the caves where the Red Goblins lived. He left his sledge and reindeer outside the caves and strode into them, and not a single sound could he hear. Bless me, they're all asleep, exclaimed Santa Claus in great astonishment. Sure enough, they were. They lay all around the middle cave, snoring. Wake up, wake up, you lazy little creatures, said Santa, clapping his hands. The red goblin sat up. Oh, 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 they cried. You're Santa Claus and we haven't finished our work. Not finished your work, thundered Santa Claus, frowning. What in the world do you mean? Please, we didn't have enough gunpowder to put the crackers, so we couldn't make enough, explained the goblin, trembling. You did have enough! You had more than enough! I sent you the gunpowder myself, roared Santa Claus. What have you done with it? Please don't be so angry with us, begged the goblins. Y you see, we had a big party on November 5th, and we used some of the gunpowder to make fireworks with. Then you're very, very naughty said Santa Claus, and I shall punish you. Put the crackers you have made into my sledge at once and come to the mayor's office after Christmas and I will tell you what your punishment is to be. The goblins scurried about and Santa Claus scolded them. They were very sulky and sullen and glared at him whenever he spoke. At last he went outside to get into his sledge, but it wasn't there. Where are my reindeer? shouted Santa Claus. He <laughs> laughed the wicked red goblins. You were cross with us, and now we're two chief goblins driven your sledge away, and now you won't have any toys for Christmas. Santa Claus was in a terrible state of mind. He rushed into a shop nearby and bought a toy motor car. This will catch them up, perhaps, he thought desperately. He wound up the motor car, jumped in and started off. He saw the track of the reindeer on the road and followed it as quickly as ever in the toy motor car could go. On and on and on he went, swishing round corners, sounding his horn continuously. Suddenly, far away in front of him, he heard the sound of sleigh bells. Hooray! I shall catch them before long, yelled Santa. But just at that moment, the toy motor car stopped and he had to get out and wind the clockwork up again. By that time, he could hear the sleigh bells no more. Presently, it became dark, but still Santa Claus drove on and on and on, always listening for the tinkling sleigh bells. All through the night, he drove until the day dawned. Goodness me, I'm right out of Toyland. I'm in the country of the North Wind, 
exclaimed Santa as he looked around and he got out to wind up his motor car again. And oh, thank goodness, there's my sledge not very far in front of me. Santa Claus drove furiously and at last caught up to the sledge. He blew a silver whistle that he had hanging round his neck and at once the reindeer stopped in spite of the two red goblins who were whipping them to make them go on. Santa got out of the motor car and at the same moment the north wind came up to see what the disturbance was. I give you these two red goblins as your prisoners, said Santa Claus sternly. They have driven off with my sledge of toys, and tomorrow is Christmas Day. I shall only just have time to get to the world of boys and girls by evening now. Oh, keep them safely, said the North Wind, grabbing hold of the wicked goblins and shaking them. Gee up, gee up, called Santa Claus to his reindeer. But alas, they had no sooner gone forward a step or two than all the reindeer fell down gasping. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, 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 cried poor Santa Claus in despair. Whatever shall I do? I must get the toys to the children somehow. Take them in the toy motor car, suggested the north wind. It's much too small, said Santa Claus sadly. Oh, I can alter that, laughed the north wind. And as you've given me two prisoners to keep as servants, I'll be he suddenly pursed up his mouth and blew towards the toy motor car three times. Immediately it grew to a tremendous size. Goodness, gasped Santa Claus. That's splendid. Now then, you two goblins, I'll give you just half an hour to unpack all of the toys out of the sledge and pack them into the motor car. The two frightened goblins set to work and soon all the toys were neatly packed into the car. Now I'm off, said Santa Claus, getting into the car and taking hold of the steering wheel. Don't bother about my reindeer. They'll go back to their stables by themselves when they feel better. Goodbye! And off drove Santa Claus as fast as ever the car would go. And that Christmas night, no child heard the sound of sleigh bells as Santa Claus went his rounds. But I heard the sound of a great motor, said one little boy to his mother. And when I looked out of the window to see why, there was a great motor car full of toys and Santa Claus was driving it. <laughs> Nonsense, said his mother, smiling. You must have dreamt it. Santa Claus never uses a motor car. But he did that year. And if that Christmas Eve you were awakened by the sound of a motor car in the middle of the night, you'll know what it was. It was the toy motor car Santa Claus had to use when the red goblins ran away with his reindeer. <laughs>